Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Well, first of all, peace to the fam. You know, poverty is good to hear from you again, my peace. brother. Um, I recognize everybody's voices pretty much. Uh, peace to my dear brother, brother Holicism. Peace, bro. um, and peace to to um to to uh what you call Chef Rob, and my dear brother from the National Solid. There, listen, I I I would say this, and I fall a lot on the side of uh, brother Holicism when it comes to infrastructure. My problem is is that I, we can involve organizations in the conversation of nation building. But my problem is is that organizations, black organizations specifically, whether you have the nation, the Moors, or whatever, are not really up to the modern time with the idea of nation building. Thank Most you. of the organizations are teaching their followers religion. And mm. it's not necessarily a religion that makes you feel proud and makes you want to go get a skill to contribute to nation building. That's so right. what happens is, and I'm speaking from a man from the inside, not a man from the outside, because I did my time in the Nation of Islam. You know what I mean? I did my time. I, I went to cities. I soldiered. I ran the FOI house. You name it. Nobody could tell me a damn thing about Elijah Muhammad. Nobody. I, and so I can understand for that me, level. for me, what I find is the problem is that you collect so many brothers and sisters together on the idea that of separation, that white people are enemies, this, that, and the next thing. But you do not empower them with the idea, listen, if we're going to build a nation, what the fuck are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do? Oh, oh, you, you over there, what are you going to do? We don't do that. We don't do that. What we do is we say we are a nation, we're together, and we try to give this illusion that we are a nation, but we don't empower the individuals to have a goal, a stake in the nation, as in, what are you going to do? Well, me, I'm going to be an electrician. Me, I'm going to be a carpenter. Me. So for me, over the years, my ideology has changed. It has changed from defending black organizations and saying that they got a right to be in existence to even challenging the idea, well, what was your motive if you collected all of these people together and everybody is still broke? What was your motive? If you got people that still riding the bus after 10 years right. being in your organization and they ain't got no car, they ain't got no house, they ain't got no this, they ain't got no that. And so I, brother, I really love your ideas. I swear I do. I do. My problem is not with you. My problem is with the people that we're going to be dealing with, the organizations, because even in the so-called conscious community, there's a lot of information being spread, um, dispersed and dispensed with, but the information is not motivating brothers and sisters to get physical, tangible skills that when we say, let's just say today we say, you know what, they got some land for us over in Africa, we can go over there right now, we can build. How many people are going to be useful in this? Thank and I you. guess I'm going to close my point with this one last thing. And this is just really near and dear to me. I remember reading an article after um, Hurricane Katrina had hit New Orleans. And they had this brother out there, he was a general. He's just your typical dude with shades on, smoking a cigar, whatever. He was running things out there. And they asked him, they was like, yo, listen, like, uh, you're out here and you're making things move. Like, what is, you know, what, what's your concept? He said, well, for me, I keep you media people the hell away from me. He said, the people I'm looking for, he said, I'm looking for the people who know how to run government. I'm looking for the people who know how to build. I'm looking for the people who know how to fix things. He said, because they can get this city up and running as soon as possible. And that article kind of changed my whole philosophy of teaching and preaching the message because I love Elijah Muhammad, and I'm always going to. I'm always going to be a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, no matter what. But I understand that there's an aspect of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching that is minimized, and what is maximized is the religious part and the godly part, but the man kept telling us, do for yourself and get something for yourself. So right. here it is. If they destroy the city, like I'm from Coney Island, you know what I'm saying? And when uh, Hurricane Sandy hit Coney Island, like it devastated certain parts of Coney Island. 
in order to revive and rebuild Coney Allen, I actually have skills that would have been able to help, you know, rebuild Coney Allen. But then there's a lot of people that I knew growing up, and they working at Burger King or McDonald's, and they don't have no skills. So the only thing they can do is sit around and wait for the white man to come put the lights back on, you know, come right. and, and get the water running again, come and do right. come do that. Like me, I could come through and get your power back on. I could come through and fix your power supplies. I can come through and fix the locks in your house because these are the two skills that God blessed me to acquire, not because nobody in the nation told me to do it. Right. Because my father's a locksmith, and I'm a third-generation locksmith, and my father's an electrician and helped build the World Trade Center that they, 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 they um, knocked down. And even though my father saw me transform and become a Muslim, put on a bow tie, shaved my face and all this stuff, he kept banging on me saying, son, you have to get a skill and you have to be committed to what you eat from. And I fought him for so many years. And said, Dad, no, it's about this nation. We got to get behind the man, whether it was Farrakhan or whoever it was. And my father kept looking at me and looking away and say, when you get older, you're going to know what time it is. And when I got older, I did, because as I always say, listen, brother, there ain't no 401k in revolution. Right. <laughs> it ain't no stocks and bonds in revolution. It ain't nothing. So when you get older, if you have devoted your life to just preaching a word or talking a word or whatever, you ain't got nothing inside of you that allows you to collect and make resources, then you're going to be bitter, old, and most of that's why a lot of dudes get older in a revolution and end up screwing white women mm-hmm. and marrying white women because they were so pro-black for so many years, and the, the investment in pro-blackness did not pay off when they got older. I'm yeah. just saying that if we're going to have this nation-building uh, nation conversation, then we need to, to collect as many individuals as we can that's going to physically, and I mean physically, help us build a nation. Yes, I do believe we need law. I do believe we need cultures and traditions. But goddamn, you know, we're going to be a, a bunch of poor, you know, broke, law-having Negroes in some <laughs> new nation. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think the big danger of not having skills but having a nation is that it's just like with the Muslims. There's the Arabs. Not the Muslims, but the Arabs, I should say, because they tell Arabs. The pale Arabs is broken poor and exacting laws on each other, like you can't fornicate, you can't adult, this, that, and next thing. And ain't nobody got no money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they got nothing but time. And you know why? And, I'm, and I hate to, I, man, I'm telling you, I love people and I ain't trying to step on no toes. Come on with it, Religion bro. is the problem. Because you got, like you said, you you we are constant. We are we are trying to apply something to a situation that is irrelevant to. Infrastructure is what just exactly what you said. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Yes, sir. I cannot, well, I, and I said this before. I cannot fast and pray an irrigation system into effect. Well, what, brothers? Can I can I say something? Because I'm going to have to get off the phone. But I just want to make this one statement before I leave. Sure, um, sure. What I believe that we're proposing, when we talk about nationhood, we talk about land and infrastructure, is like Marcus Garvey and Elijah Muhammad on steroids. What, <laughs> what, what we haven't we haven't done yet. What we're to, the division that we have in our head. There's been organizations that come close. There's been organizations that have ideologies that match what we're talking about. But in terms of physically. Um, having this nation and this land and what we're talking about, the vision of Pan-Africanism, it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been nope. done yet. So this, hasn't, is, this, been is, this is every, everybody that came before us, they were the, they were the models and the, and the things we need to learn from, but we're talking about that on steroids, and that's all I'll yeah, say about that. Mm-hmm. 